Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. In this video, we're going to be upgrading the upper link in Ratchet to a new link that I've designed that is more equipped to be hit with a bump stop. So in the last video, I installed the bump stop where it is now. I actually installed it on the other side, but throughout the week, I've been building this side of the rear suspension. And with that, I added the bump stop same place where it is on this side, on the other side, all the same geometry. In the comments, because the location of this bump stop was admittedly a little bit questionable, a lot of people said to have the bump stop hit on the top of the spindle, which is actually a great way to do it, but on my design here, the spindle is actually buried inside the wheel, so the bump stop hitting the top of the spindle isn't an option. Another option I had was to mount the bump stop out here, which is really good placement for it, but then the bump stop is outside of the body, and I would have to basically cut up the whole rear portion of the quarter here, and then it would also interfere heavily with the rear fender, and uh, I guess I'm a bit of a prima donna, and I wanted to keep the nice, clean Baja look, so I put the bump stop here because that keeps it inside the body. Maybe I'll have some issues bending the upper link, I don't know, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. But regardless of all that, one thing I do agree with, and I, I knew this when I was installing the bump stop there uh, either way, this upper link will never be able to take the impact of hitting that bump stop. So I knew that I wanted to design something a little bit stronger, and if you guys have watched my other videos, you know I can't really let stuff like this go. So let's go to the other side and let me show you a new design that I came up with for the upper link. All right, so this is what I came up with, if you guys can see this. It's, it's the same length as the upper link. It's obviously nice and fat here with the, where the bump stop is going to hit it. And then it's gonna have all of this cross bracing in here with an additional piece bolted onto the side. And then it's gonna have a padded, a 3 16 inch thick um, actually strike plate on the top where the bump stop will hit it. It'll go in here like this. The thickest part of it is right where the bump stop is going to come into contact with it. Just like the original link, the end on the spindle here is going to be a heim so that I can still rotate it to make some minor adjustments in the length. I'm going to lose the uh, the finite adjustability of the link because the original upper link had a right hand thread and a left hand thread so you could just rotate it a little bit and get infinite adjustments. This link you're not going to be able to rotate so you're going to have to make 180 degree rotations just to this one heim so I'm definitely going to lose some uh, infinite adjustability. It's now going to have just certain dimensions that it can go but it will still be adjustable. And then the end back on the ja chassis here, which used to be another Heim, is now going to be a bushing. The reason for that is when the bump stop hits the top of the link here, because where it's striking is above the center line, kind of like the, uh, the rear trailing arm or the rear link of like a trophy truck set up with a solid axle, and where they connect their shock absorbers there, they try to get it below the center line. It's going to have the same issue here. When it hits above the center line, it would have a tendency to, to twist that link. That's why I didn't want to have a heim on both ends. So this bushing will keep the, uh, the link from twisting when the bump stop hits it. So since then, I've, I've drawn up the parts. I will have a link in the description to my shared folder where I will have under ratchet rear suspension, I'll have the DXF files for these if anybody's interested in them because the DXF files are what I send to the laser cutting company to laser cut the pieces. But here's the heim, which is gonna be on that end. Here's the bushing, which is going to be on this end. This is the side plate. This is gonna get welded like that. And back here, that's going to get welded like that. And then for additional support, I've got these pieces which are just triangulated to give it strength. So those will get welded like that. These will be the top and bottom pieces. And then this is the 3 16th plate which will get welded onto the top like this for the, the strike pad. So now that I have all those parts, uh, let's tag, TIG this up. 
so that we can bolt it in place here and see how it looks. All right, so what I've done up to this point is I've got the link in here, top plate is tacked on, side plates obviously tacked on. I've got this triangular piece in here just to uh, give it some inner strength and this is right where the, uh, the bump stop is going to be hitting. So that's just to add some extra support. But what I've done at this point is I've, I've basically sized it up where I want it to be and I have put this and I've basically set it up here with zero camber, so it's starting from neutral. And I, I set everything up here with a little bit of extra thread to play with. I don't want a lot of extra thread here because the more, the more of the heim that I have sticking out here, the weaker this is going to be. I think this is going to be the weak point. I think, I'm not sure, but because of that, I did not want a lot of thread sticking out there because... I felt like that would just make it a weak point. So what I did is I dialed it in, I adjusted the depth here so that I've got just a couple of extra threads in case I decide I do want to bring this in some, I've got room to do that, but I don't have so much that it's increasing the weak point there. Clamp this into place and now I'm going to pull this out of here and I'm going to uh, weld those in place so that the bung is, is essentially set up the way that I want it. And then I'll move forward and finish welding everything else up. All right, so here's the link. It is ready to go. I'm just about ready to install it. I've got the uh, inch and a half bushing in here, and I put a strap on it just like I do on the uh, K2 
control arms for a little bit more strength. Whether it needs the strength for taking the load from the bump stops or just the strength so that if it's barrel rolling in an accident or something it can't be ripped off of that. I don't know, but either way, ever since I had that failure on Mahler, I always like to wrap the bushings back there now. It's got the 3 16 pad on here. You can see my start and stops through it on the MIG weld underneath. I TIG welded all this, but I MIG welded this just because I, I know the MIG welder does just a big fat weld and uh, that added adds a lot to the strength up there. I've got this piece all welded up. I welded all of these edges with filler rod so that I could get it nice and strong. And then on this top plate, I didn't show that in the video because this was a, a long, tedious process, but I didn't use filler rod on any of that. I just ran around with actually real low heat and I was just melting up the edges of that and pulling it in. And I had to do that on everything, and there's a lot there. So that was actually a lot of welding, but it, it does add a lot of strength. It also looks it looks really neat, but it added a lot of strength, and it does not add a lot of weight because it's there's not any wasted material there. Uh, that's why I put that on there. And then I've got the bushing here. I also MIG welded the bushing. I've told you guys before, I now, I now MIG weld these because it doesn't get it so hot. When I used to TIG weld these in, I would actually have some problems with the uh, the heat getting through and damaging the threads a little bit. But when I MIG weld it, I don't have any problems with the thread, and I like that better. So I MIG welded I MIG welded the bushing in there, and that actually comes out really nice. So regardless, uh, let's take this and actually throw it into ratchet here and see how it looks. So that is it. I've got it bolted all in there. You just saw me cycle the suspension all the way down, all the way up, you know, making sure that the pad here doesn't interfere with the uh, bypass at all or the pad doesn't interfere with this. Remember, this is going to have some coils over here, so everything kind of has a place where it belongs here. I didn't want to go any wider with this because of that. Some people were addressing a concern that if the lower control arm is twisting under acceleration and braking, the top of the spindle here would actually lean forward and backwards. And when I had the round tube, that could easily create that bump stop to miss or uh, lock up on that upper link. And that actually would have been, that would have been a serious problem. I didn't even think about that. Now, I, I will say I don't think this is going to flex much. I, I think that lower control arm is going to be able to hold it no problem, but you never know. So because of that, that's one of the reasons I put this strike pad on here. It gives it, it's two and a half inches wide, so it gives it some room so that if this is flexing forwards and backwards a little bit, there's some room for this to still easily just hit the flat plate. I adjusted this so like like when I was setting it up initially, it is at zero camber and when I was making the adjustments and turning that one rotation or 180 degrees of rotation on that Heim makes very small adjustments. I was a little worried that you know making 180 degrees would move it past the point where I was trying to adjust it but actually that wasn't a problem. It, it, it was actually still quite precise with its uh, adjustability so that was good. And then of course back here it's a bushing now, so this is locked in, but this this keeps it from being able to rotate at all when uh, when the bump is actually hitting it. So overall that's it. I this this is gonna be my end product. I this will have to fail before I uh, make any modifications to that. It feels really, really strong. 
it's obviously heavier than the first link I had in there, but it's not it's not a brick. It's not as heavy as you would think. Um, some of these side plates are kind of thin. That's why I did this triangulation. But uh, that's what I'm going to go with for now. I'll I'll keep an eye on it as I'm testing out the vehicle. But I I do feel like it's going to be it's going to be pretty strong. But that's it for this video. I'm very happy with this upper link, and now I feel good about the bump stop. I felt good about the bump stop's location. I've explained to you guys why it is where it is. I'm happy with where it is, but I was not happy with that upper link. That obviously wasn't going to work out. Uh, but I am pretty happy with this upper link. Hopefully this one works out. You know, we'll see. Boy, it's really kind of like as, as I built the front suspension, it gets more and more congested, and the rear here is getting more and more congested. It's cool because everything, everything appears to be working together, and I've got it set up so that everything has just enough clearance to clear everything, but it's... It's interesting when everything gets in here and it starts to get congested. But I'm happy with it. I, I think so far everything looks really good. That is it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope it's helping you with whatever you guys are working on. And I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.